There is very little that our government and our media are worse at than maths. Since the pandemic started, we've been treated to a kind of Sesame Street style parade of cabinet ministers and journalists patronisingly explaining what the R rate is and why we should care. R is the average number of people one infected person passes a virus onto. To beat coronavirus, we need to keep R as low as we possibly can. The lower the level, the fewer the measures, the higher the level, the tougher and stricter we will have to be. Um, but um, I think, you know, a change in the range of R um, that still encompasses um, most of the values that we think R could be um, is, um, is, is very important to look at. Uh, but overall, we, you know, this, this report from the scientists says that the R is not, uh, is not likely to be above one. Well, since my job became unviable, I've been doing some online maths teaching. It's what my first degree is in. So I thought maybe we could have a kind of sophisticated, non-idiot conversation about the R rate and what's happening with it. So first up, yes, all it is is a measure of how many people the average infected person passes the virus on to. So if the R rate is greater than one, the infection rate in our society goes up. And if it's less than one, it goes down. But Boris Johnson and co seem to think that if they can get the R rate down to 0.9, that's it, job done. They're like, da, 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 da. start the fans, please. And we're all allowed to go out and lick each other's faces or something. But the fact is that, and I, I should be clear about my assumptions, if we assume the current UK infection rate is about 86,000, and we assume that the virus has about a one week cycle before being passed to the next person, then with an R rate of 0.9, we would eradicate the pandemic in only two years. And I don't think anyone believes that the current lockdown is sustainable for two years. So what we need to be looking at is how we can get the R rate much, much, much lower than that. So let's graph about all this. Hey, I've no more math jokes. And um, this is the chart of what happens to the UK infection rate under a series of different R rates. The top line is if the R rate is 1.1, you can see that the infection level goes up in our society. The next line down is 0.9. And then the other two lines show an R rate of 0.5 and 0.2. And you can see how much faster and how much quicker they are able to deal with the pandemic and get the infection rate really, really low. And they have the potential to eradicate the virus relatively quickly if we can get the rate down there and keep it down there. The other thing we should be looking about with, at with these graphs is the area under the graph. Because the area under the graph shows us how many people get COVID on the way to this lower infection rate and on the way to eradicating the pandemic. In order to find out the area under the graph, we have to integrate our exponential function. And here's the equation that does that. And what it tells us is this. Over the next 12 weeks, with an R rate of 1.1, we would expect 2 million new cases in the UK. That is one in 30 people in the UK. That's obviously not something that we want to accept. With an R rate of 0.9 over the next 12 weeks, we're looking at new infections of about half a million. And that's actually still a heck of a lot, right? If we can get the R rate down to 0.5, we're looking at a quarter of that, about 120,000. And if we could get the R rate down to 0.2, we're looking at 50,000. And we're not very good at knowing what the death rate is from coronavirus. And that's because we don't test people. So we don't find out if there are people out there who've got it and haven't been ill at all or who are asymptomatic. And it's still very, very hard for people without symptoms to get a test. But based on what, based on what we do know, about 2% of people who have been tested and shown to have the virus have died. So if we assume that rate, we're looking at the difference between 40,000 deaths at the top level there and 1,000 at the bottom. So there's 39,000 lives in the balance here. I think it's worth putting our backs into sorting it out and getting our R rate down to something really, really serious. Now, the other thing is that the R rate relates to a lot of different factors. It is not just about whether we're in lockdown or not. It's also, of course, about whether we've got an effective track and trace system 
we haven't. Whether we've got isolation facilities, we haven't. Whether people can go and find out what they've got, whether people are getting support so that they're able to stay at home if they want to, but we haven't. Whether vulnerable, it, all the other stuff. But it's also about the virus itself because different viruses reproduce more or less effectively and spread more or less effectively. We know that the novel coronavirus that showed up in Kent, the new strain, we know that that one had a considerably higher R rate, even under quite strict lockdown conditions. So we need to get our infection rate down as well, because otherwise new strains are likely to appear, new mutations are likely to occur. And the fact is that we have to be aiming to get rid of COVID, not just keep the infection rate low, but get rid of it. Because one infected person and an R rate above one is all the conditions that are necessary for a global pandemic. That's where we started. So until we've really, really got rid of it, we cannot possibly start to think about genuinely opening up our society properly. And there's some good news. We think, but we don't know yet that the vaccine is going to reduce the transmission rate, is effectively going to push the R rate down. And what we shouldn't do is like go straight out and spend that R and like compensate by all socialising more and by opening up more and more places and encouraging people to, to go out and, and increase the R rate. What we should be doing is capitalising on that and going, hang on, the vaccine isn't perfect. It's not going to give us a zero R rate. But if we can use it as an extra tool and still work to do the testing, the tracing, the isolating, still work to enable people to be at home, to enable people to isolate individually, to do all of those other things, then potentially we can get the R rate down to a really low level. And here's the amazing thing. The virus has a two week incubation period. If we can get the R rate down to zero globally, the whole pandemic is over in a fortnight. And yes, we might have to put some really tight rules down. Or we might have to really stick, st stick to some very difficult rules for those two weeks. And we might have to get our government to actually put its back into the situation and do all the stuff that we need. But we're two weeks away from the solution. If we really focus on the R rate and if the government actually pays attention to how the maths really work. See you next week.